my cousins. How's it? Hello, Craig. How's it? We're just waiting for a few people. Hello, Albert. Albert Fenter, very good friend of mine. My wife Sandy is watching again. That's good. We're going to start the show now. The show is going to be about just um, golden oldies. The people have been asking me so much to do the show about. Can you give me some water, please? So people are going to ask me lots of that. So the whole show is about the olden jokes that I used to do for the past 37 years, whatever. So uh, that's what it's about. People are saying, please do this, please do that, please do this, please do that. Once again, I would like to say that uh, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people that have uh, signed up already. There's 306 already. So let's make this, see if we can get 20,000 or something. Wouldn't that be great? Tell your friends. Good morning, uh, Yolanda Jones. How are you from Essex? Kim Evans, hello, Baz and family. How are you? Tony Jardim, let's, let's get going. My cousins, here's Jack. He's my stage manager today. Come here, Jack. He's telling me when and how and what to do. Hey, you're the stage manager. There we go. All right, as soon as I reach 500 people on here, we're gonna start the show. Thank you, Danny. I love you too, Blue. Thank you. Good morning, all of Hello, Ian. Ian Redderburn from New Zealand. I said he was from Berea, but he's obviously moved to New Zealand. Mm. We're on 406 already. As soon as we hit 500, I'll start the show. Can you get me a stool or something, Jack? Um, I'll just give it to my sort of stage hand. Yeah, that, that'll be Jack. That small one there is fine. How's it? 440. Okay. Can everybody see me okay here? Yeah, I'm sure. Just uh, lacquer. Can anybody see me? Just give me a message. Everybody's. Hello, Jillian, how are you? Watching again, thank you very much. I'm so blessed. We are almost on 500, and I'm gonna start. Oh, we're over 500. Okay, hello, my cousins. It's Barry Hilton here. This is the lockdown golden oldie special. I got my boxer dog going berserk in the lounge. What can I do? As you can see, the sign behind me says, this is a happily ever after, which it is. We are going to make it through this thing and we're going to carry on and we're going to go forward. Now let me think, how can I start? When I started my gags in 1983, when I first was a professional, the first time I've turned pro, um, the jokes used to be quite simple, you know what I'm saying? Like two oaks walking to a bar and the one got knocked out because it was an iron bar. But it's moved from there, you know what I'm saying? Like, we used to tell great, great jokes about a serious Dutchman goes to buy a brand new car from BMW in Banoni. He says to, him, he says to his friend, my cousin, are my flickers working? And his mate says, yes, no, yes, no. Now, I used to love telling gags like that because they were so easy. A guy goes into a shoe shop to buy a pair of tortoise skin shoes. Took him four hours to walk out. There we go. He says to the bloke, listen, his shoes are scuffed, they're too tight. He said, have you tried it with a tongue out? He said, that's fine, that's fine, I used to love those flippin' jacks. Two oaks on a beach in Durban. The one says, my cousin, check it out, Dad, seagull. Another request I've got, there was an earthquake in, um, in Valcom many, many years ago. Flattened the block of flat stuckened. And they thought nobody could possibly survive 16 stories high flat sticking on the ground finish. <coughs> and they're about to give up the search for, for people and they hear from inside, help me. Help me, I should believe. Van, are you alive? I'm bloody alive. Where are you? Flat 1607. He wakes up in hospital, he says, my legs. I can't feel my legs. Can somebody please tell me why I couldn't feel my legs? The nurses, they, they, they cut your arms off, I'm afraid. So what about the joke about the guys in hospital? He says, Mom, can you nurses do, can you use a bedpan? Seriously, three grand a night, I've got to do my own cooking. Seriously. Now I went to operation many years ago. I used to have gout, for people who didn't know that. I used to have gout over here, it was terrible. And I remember going for an operation, that was quite scary. Operation in South Africa back in the days, 
you go for an operation, you, you're lying on this elevated skateboard, you know, and uh, you're basically naked and um, wearing these like paper underwear and all that stuff. And you get a complex about your breath because you're the only one who's not wearing a mask. You know what I'm saying? And the doctor confuses you completely. Craig's like, what's the problem? The problem is, bro, you study for seven years and then still practice. An anesthetist is a sadist, puts this plastic thing on your face. Count to ten. <laughs> this chap's not going to make it to three. And you think, is it, eh? Is it? One. One. And if you notice, when you come out of an operation, you're in more pain than when you went in. Okay. And then they, they sort of try and revive you. Wake up. Wake up. Mrs. Hills, would you wake up, please? This is a private hospital. We need your bed. And then the nurse tries to revive you. Like, wake up, wake, 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 wake up, wake up. And you think to yourself, as soon as I can move my arm, I'm going to smack a goose in the mouth. Now, back in the days, you could say things like goose, and this is my bloke, and all that stuff, and stick and it was brilliant, you know, I don't know. We could tell jokes, but some of my favorite jokes were, were just talking to my mates and things that happened. Like, for instance, I've got a very good friend, Tony the King, he's a really funny comedian, and uh, he, him and I were quite good friends, and we had both had children at the same time. Um, we weren't in the same room making it, but at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and I had Robin and Tyler, and he had a little boy, uh, good lad. <laughs> And then we were on the way to the little boys, to Tony the King's place. And uh, Robin and Tyler at that time were watching, they were watching all these, the, the TV movies for kids. And you know when TVs, when kids watch movies, they get sort of get into it, or they, they watch a series, they get into it, Thomas the Tank, and these guys, and these, that day, it was like when the, the, the heroes said like, don't do this because you're going to go to jail. So I'm driving a car with Robin and Tyler, and I left my car door open accidentally, and uh, Tyler says to me, Daddy, your door is open. And then Robin said, Daddy, if you don't close your door, <coughs> you're going to fall out and die. And then Tyler said, then who, who, who's going to take us to Jason's place? Okay. Kids like that, because kids are brilliant, you know. I mean, I've got all these kids. And in South Africa, we've got this thing called conjugal rights. And uh, it's basically, if you're a bloke, you can have sex anytime you want. You know what I'm saying? That's the way it is. As long as you've got cash in your pocket, you're fine. But Tyler used to wait until his mother and I were conjugally. And he just like burst into the room and said to me, how's it, Dad? Why, why are you sleeping on Mom? Get out. Do not come in this room until you knock. He'd go out and go, <coughs> oh, how's it? I knocked. I'm sorry. Why are you still sleeping on mom? Get out. Do not come in this room until you get permission, boy. Hey, Daddy, it's cold in the passage, Daddy. Daddy. You don't love me anymore, Daddy. Daddy, shall I get some oil for that squeak, Daddy? Where's Mommy going anyway? How come the dog can watch? I wish I was a dog. Now, have you got pets in your house? Have you got pets? Dogs and that, have you got pets? We had this machine called Sugar. Really cool dog, eh? And uh, we were close, of course. And Sugar says to me that one day, Barry, because we were close, am I a Rottweiler? You're a Rottweiler, Barry. Do I weigh 57 kgs? You weigh more than 57 kgs. Are people scared of me? Yes. So why do you call me Sugar? I was like, bite out and give him diabetes. 
Because dogs are cool, you know. Now, my wife had a little dog called Mischief. And uh, it's funny eh, how men and women think things differently. You know what I'm saying? We think of things completely differently. But we'll always be different. Men and women will always be different. So we had this little dog, Mischief. It was blind and deaf. He was 19 years old. He was blind and deaf. We took him on holiday to Blittenberg Bay once and he, he didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? So one day we actually left him in the garage accidentally. Now my wife is convinced, which I'm sure a lot of you out there, men and women are convinced they can actually talk to the dog. But I've got a little bit of another thing about it. You know? So we come home, imagine this. We come home, we open the electric gates, <laughs> open the garage, <laughs> And inside the garage, in the middle of the garage, there's this dog, mischief, blind, deaf, 19 years old, sort of cracking. And my wife looks at it, she says, look at that, baby. Look at that, he's all by himself. Sorry, mischief, we love you. Mommy and daddy love you. We were very selfish going out and leaving you all by yourself in a naughty garage. Daddy, you're very naughty. Look at Mr. Daddy. Look at him. He loves us. I wonder what he's thinking. That's where the men and women stop there because she's thinking that and I'm thinking this dog is thinking, okay, bro. Where is this breeze coming from, John? Thank you, Jack. Even my son, Jack, laughed at that one. So what else should we talk about? BMW drivers. That was the one I used to tell that. BMW drivers, they used to make me sick. You could hear them before you see them. Don't want a short. Do you remember that BMW drivers? As soon as they got the keys to their cars, they learn Morse code. Because they'd ride up behind you and flash their lights out of the way, my brother. I'm coming through. I've got a BMW. W. And if they couldn't afford a 325 IS, they took the badge off. Once my wife was asking me about the sound, is a little but things coming up in the air. It's very quiet. Shall I talk louder? Yeah. I'll have to talk louder. This is actually very sort of strange me doing a big show in my lounge for one person, two dogs. <laughs> Uh, two people, my wife, my son, and two dogs, and a goldfish who's rather swimming in other direction. Two. two. We got two. We got two goldfish. We got three goldfish. How many goldfish we got, Jack? We got two goldfish. Check. I said two. Flip six. So um, you know, see, I can't do. I'm not very good at maths and things like that. So, well, I am. I am really good at maths. But I was in school. I always used to think differently. And I remember the teacher saying to me one day, "Hilton, you are stupid." You can't even tell me your name. And I said, seriously? Said, oh. It's Barry, sir. He says, Barry hasn't got 15 letters. I oh, know, bro. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Barry. The sound is good now. Thank you. The sound is now perfect. Thank you. My sound is fine. Thank you. So if everybody else's sound is fine, that means you've got a cock TV set or a screen or whatever. So let's have a look here. Much better thing to touch my brother. Okay. I was in England and I went to England. Has anybody been to England? I'm sure you a lot of you in England. And if you notice in England, when you get in a taxi cab in England, it's so flippin' weird because you, you worry because you're South African, you know what I'm saying? You get in a taxi cab and the doors immediately lock. And then this big British guy turns around and says, all right, love, where, where can I take you then, love? I said, Blue, just stop me on the corner. I'll be fine. Thank you very, very much. I got a few requests. I'm going to do some jokes about... Hold on, my wife's asked me. Oh, I went to some... Uh, I was working once in... in, in uh, Sun City, and uh, that was a cool time. Sun City was like so far ahead of the thing. They had all these massive attractions, and one of them was this huge bridge that used to shake like that, you know what I'm saying? And to simulate an earthquake, because if you've been to Sun City, it looks like a volcanic place and all that. So we were all cool, you know, because South Africans, we know that there's no earthquakes in South Africa. So we walk across the bridge and it would go, <laughs> we 
you wouldn't bother. But behind us, all the Chinese and the Japanese tourists are going like, so, 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 which I think is in Japanese, personally. And then <laughs> my voice laughing. <laughs> Did you like that, Jeff? <laughs> Come and sit there so I can see you. Um, I, you know how, what a warm feeling I get when my 10 year old son is actually laughing at stuff that he has in here. And then we went, we went to the valley of the waves. Do you remember the valley of the waves? They had this sort of slide called the temple. Do you remember that? And they used to have all these sort of guys on the top of these red speedos and sort of crack like that. And they would, they, they were all be like weird. And you'd be at the top of the it's a 90 foot drop, 90 foot vertical drop into a pool of brown water, which you hoped was mud. Okay. And then just before you go, you, they sort of, they made you fold your arms like that. And I say, but you should not be doing this, rather. Now you fold your arms like that. And then they cross your legs. If you go on one of the water slides and they cross your legs and you think, why? But you realize afterwards, because halfway down, when your legs are hot, not crossed properly, gravity goes like, is that? <laughs> That's when your poop wall sort of becomes an inward valve thing like that. It's very, very, very difficult. <laughs> oh, Jack likes that one. Here's a stupid joke for you. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> My boy's laughing. It's making me feel great. There's a joke from a great comic <laughs> called Lummy. <laughs> Obviously, Jack likes poop jokes, you know? <laughs> and he likes <laughs> fart jokes. Oh. Okay, can I tell the world's best fart joke? Okay. So, Oak making passionate love with a cherry from Boxburg, French Oak, he says, telling what beautiful eyes you've got. <laughs> what a lovely lips. <laughs> he does a blouse, he says, what a magnificent set <coughs> of Bristol cities. Puts his tongue in a belly button. The excitement gets too much for her and she cracks. <laughs> he looks down and he says, Be patient, my little one, I'm coming. <laughs> Do you like that? You can't, Jack doesn't understand that. Thank heavens for that, boo. So, kids, are we going to see? Uh, oh, yes. One of the best things that ever made in South Africa, Sandy's giving me a little bit of notes here. One of the best things ever made in South Africa, we know, because South Africa is a brilliant country, um, was Pro Nutro. And Pro Nutro is arguably the most absorbent product ever made, still to this day. It was in, uh, conceptualized, I think, in 1962. And since 1962, not one, not one South African child has managed to fill up a bowl of Pro Nutro with milk and pro neutro and finish it in one go without stopping for a refill and a rehydration from his mother. Do you remember that? We'd put this much pro neutro on the bottom and this much milk. And the pro neutro would say, Oaks, join hands, we're gonna make cock with this food, bro. Remember that? That's why we used to eat pro neutro as fast as we could. You remember that? Because it So, because your mother was cool, you know. Did you ever come home late? And your mother, you know, when you were 18, you could drink, drive, vote, do the number. Do you remember that? Drink, drive, vote, do the number. You're 18 years old. You come home at 3 o'clock in the morning. Your mother and father still think you're 12. They're waiting for you in a lounge, camouflaged in the curtains. Remember that? And then you knew you were in cock when your mother spoke to you in a language that never even existed yet. Remember that? Where have you? You fall. Fall in now. And I'm like, chill out, Marco. Smoke some of this, you'll be fine, girl. Then you know you went cock and your mother folded her arms and cracked like, oh, is that so? Is that so? That's how you speak to your mother. Who nearly died giving birth to you. Then you know you were in serious cock when your father showed you his watch. You knew you were in cock there. Remember that? He'd ask you a stupid question. What bloody time do you call this? Mom, has dad been smoking my Zolia? 
Get to your room. Remember that. Get to your room. And you'll be standing by your bedroom door thinking, okay, my room. The next, the next time this bed comes round, I'm on it, Jono. Oh, Jack's asked me to do the two snakes joke. Okay, two snakes going through the jungle. Oh. The ones I've proved, are we poisonous? I can't. <coughs> I've just bitten my tongue here. Like that one. Two snakes going through the jungle, I guess. The one says, bro, what's 17 plus 43 plus 926 plus a million plus three? I don't know, bro. I'm not an adder. <laughs> and you know why that joke's funny? Because snakes can't do this. Sir, AJ, what do you think? What else shall I do now, boy? Robocop. Robocop, it's a bit of a hard one. You're, I remember there was a... When Robocop first came out, everybody went berserk about Robocop. And uh, it was like... <coughs> and I'm thinking about Robo, Robocop in, in Boxburg. Now, normally it should be 911, but Robocop, big smash in Boxburg. Oh, phone's up, you know, emergency service. 08443 extension. And then Robocop comes on. <coughs> Give a joke about the creepy crawly. You want to do? I can't do the creepy crawly joke. Yet. My son, um, he phoned me up one day, and you know when, you're, when your light is 22 years old, and he phones you at two o'clock in the morning and calls you daddy, then you know there's some cock coming your way. Basically, it means your your wallet is about to go on a diet. You know what I'm saying? So he phones me up, and I do tai chi and cock like that. I do tai chi. I do tai chi because it keeps me fit. You can check us with that and that. Basically, it keeps me fit. Tai chi actually makes it cool in your life. See. And then you're pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? So one day, he phones me up and he says to me, Daddy, Daddy, I need to talk to you, Daddy. I said, well, talk to me. No, I need to talk to you in person, Daddy. So it's two o'clock in the morning, boy. Daddy, I need to talk to you now, Daddy. So he comes to my house, he sits down, and half an hour later, of Daddy, I need to talk to you now, Daddy, Daddy. I said to him, get to it, boy. He says, Daddy, Daddy. Natalie's pregnant, Daddy. Who the hell is Natalie, bro? So he says to me, don't worry, Daddy. We're having a natural childbirth epidural. So what's so natural about epidural, bro? Yeah. So now we're using your discovery card. And about four months later, he says to me, Daddy, don't worry, we've made a plan. we decided we're going to have a water birth. 25 grand. I said to him, are you, are you mold? 50 grand, you can use my pool. I'll give the creepy crawly the day off. You know what I'm saying? So there's my daughter-in-law, future daughter-in-law, on the second step of the, of the pool, plopping it, giving it birth. <laughs> and the creepy crawly, Minding his own business in the deep end. Guy goes to the dentist 
A woman goes to the dentist. He said, I'm going to take out your wisdom teeth. She said, I'd rather have a baby. He said, make your mind up. I've got to adjust the chair. There we go. Do you know what time it is? I've, do, I've just done that, Christopher. Awesome, seeing so many studying. Give me, give me a thing, Jack. Oh, I used to stay in Kempton Park. Jeez, this is one of my first sort of little four days I had. I used to stay in Kempton Park. Kempton Park really was a rough place. It was a rough place at the time. And uh, I sent my son to the shops on his skateboard and he came out, it was on bricks. <coughs> but then we actually, when you think about it, because anybody, uh, this has been requested a million times, anybody realize how Portuguese and Greek shop owners made all their fortunes? And we think it's because they worked 16, 17, sometimes 18 hours a day in their shops, seven days a week, relentlessly, selling milk and bread. No, they made their money by not giving kids the correct change and forcing them to take chappies. Do you remember that? You crack like, where's my change? 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 What change? What time look like you? What change? Take chaps, not one chap, not one. Take three, take three, you son of the beige. Now I want to tell you, without chappies, me and Standard 8 would not have cracked it. It's not like Google now, you just go da 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 Chappies was the source of knowledge in those days. I mean, did you know, Ray, that the Empire State Building grows 1.1% in volume in summertime? Did you know that, Ray? Chappie boy, eat some flippin' chappies. Ian Wedderburn, my cousin, did you know that St. Paul's Basilica was fashioned after an ostrich egg? Did you know that? Okay, come back to South Africa and sell stuff in your spa. Don't stay in New Zealand. Eat flippin' burvos. Darren, from Warburg. Darren, did you know? Did you know that an anaconda Because that's where they cut the page off. Through. <laughs> I ate standard. I ate chappies for the whole of standard seven to find out. Anaconda was a snake. Mum. Oh, okay. Mum for checking me. Okay, I'll do that one. When you when you were eighteen and nineteen, you remember that you'd be like squeaky, squeaky, flippin' clean. You'd start washing on a Thursday. To go out on a Friday. You'd, you'd find parts that didn't know existed the week before and you'd make sure everything was clean. But your mother used to really grate you. Do you remember that? You'd, as you're walking out the door, every time you'd go out and she'd say, Barry? Yes, mom. Barry? Have you changed your underwear? Seriously, mom? Because, you know, I want to just sidetrack there. Isn't it funny how things happen? Your mother used to grate you. Even though you love her, you probably miss your mother, and I miss my mother daily. But you remember how your mother used to flip and grate? I'll do an Afrikaans joke now. Um, how your mother used to grate you. Do you, remember, do you remember that? You'd come home from school, and she'd go like, Barry, yes, mom. Have you fed the dogs? No, mom, I'll do it now, mom. Then you can feed the dogs. Barry, yes, mom. Have you swept the stoop outside? No, mom. Barry, yes, mom. Have you fed your little brother? No, mom. Barry? <coughs> yes, mommy? <laughs> so, do you remember that? So you go out on a Friday night and your mother would say, have you got clean underwear on? I said, mom, you know, no, Barry, you don't understand. We're not from a wealthy family. And heaven forbid, if you get run over, tonight by a bus and you've got dirty underwear we don't want the medical aid to refute the claim because you've got three too many skid marks and i should say mom you know actually if i do get run over by a bus there's a very big chance that i'm gonna cock in my pants Joke. Lips outside uh, lots, of requests. lots of requests for the lebs outside and I stayed a lot in Benoni. What a lacquer job. Benoni was the and the, some of the best people in the world. The Lebanese oaks, I just love them, bro. I love them. You know what I'm saying? That they, they walk like, is that my bro? 
and the Lebs were actually in the Baroni. For a one time, they were known as to be naughty oaks. Eh? Can you imagine this Lebanese like He's walking past this fruit and veg shop, and uh, he sees this big pumpkin, and he gets a pumpkin, he picks the pumpkin up, and he's walking down the road. And the policeman says to him, Yo! Yes, your officer. What have you got on your arm? Sir, it's a bicycle. <laughs> I said, it's not a flippin' bicycle, it's a pumpkin. The lab cracks, seriously, is it 12 o'clock already, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> My wife even laughed at that one. The labs, and the labs I had a short-term memory problem, because anytime you bump into Lebanese, I'm going to we love you guys, but we're part of South Africa, we love you. It's the way it is. But the Lebanese, it's always with, if, every time they got into a fight, they'd go like, is it, eh? Is it? Is it, brother? Brother? Do you know who I am, brother? And I used to say, bro, if you don't know what exactly is my chance here, okay, make a plan, go, Joe. I'm going to do the bry one just now. I promise you I'll do the bry one. Non-return valve. Non-return valve. Isn't it funny? I still use that joke today, funny, because it's so true. When, uh, when Robin was 12, I lie, even earlier, he was like 9 or 10, um, throughout the kids coming out, because they think that you know everybody in class. Remember that? Remember that? Daddy, yo. Do you know your bum? No. Now he's in my class in 30. Daddy, and then he said to me, Daddy, do you know your bum? I know my bum, boy. He said, Daddy, you know your bum has got a non-return valve, Daddy. I said, how do you work that? He says, no, Daddy, if you didn't have a non-return valve in your bum, when you have a bath, you'd fill up and drown. Okay. And I was in the bath once with Bradley. How about this? He was three years old. We were in the bath, and we bathed him to get a dad and son move. You know, dad and son, dad and son. In the bath, and he sort of checks me down, and all the pubes, and then he's like, He does like the John Wayne or the Jason Bourne thing. Daddy, daddy. <laughs> you got a beard on your toilet, you bird. <laughs> I said, him, that's it. You've got a bath with your mother next time. So he bathed with his mother the next day. And he comes screaming out of the bathroom. <laughs> ah! 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 I said, what's the matter? Daddy, mommy's toilet's dropped off, daddy. <laughs> My wife even laughed at that one. The first time you visited Bradley's flat. Oh, my boy Bradley. I love him. I, I, I love you, Brad. If you're watching this, I love you very, very much. But you go through a time where the kids hate you. No matter what you do, no matter how you do it, kids hate you. They hate you. You know what I mean? And you get that. And the kid always says to you, I hate you. I'm never coming back to this house again. I'm going to move on my own. I don't need you. And all this. Nah! Now, it all started off because I used to moan at him every morning because he'd go out for a jaw. He'd go out for a full-on jaw. And come in about 4 o'clock in the morning and wake up bright and early at about 11 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? And no hello, how's it? He'd go straight to the bread bin. He'd open the flipping bread bin and he would take out toast. And he would just do it. It was like a never-ending supply as he'd open up this food there and he'd toast it. So he thought there was a factory in the bread bin. He thought there was a bread factory in the bread bin. So when he left and he screamed at me, Hate you! I'm never coming back here again! I don't smoke you! You're a horrible cock dad! I said, seriously, I'm sorry to see you go. Would you like the green suitcase or the blue? So about a week and a half later, I'm a dad, you know what I'm saying? And I'm feeling really, really sad about this. So I swallowed my pride and I, I went to Bradley and he said to me, oh, hello, Dad. I said, hello, boy. And um, I actually did something that all parents threaten to do, but not one of you has done it. But I did it for us, actually, me. I did it. I went to my son's house and I jumped all over his lap, sweet blue. I peed in a pot plant in the garden. Hey? I, I, I stood in front of the television and asked him questions. I even hoid a snarly on the remote. On the green button, bro. So I said to him, how's it going, bro? He says, Dad, I'm a bit worried. I said, what's the matter? He said, the bread bin doesn't work. There we go. <laughs> Nala? Nala. Sure, that's a oh, shame. We had a brilliant dog in Benoni called Nala. Oh, she's a beauty. She's a big Rottweiler. She was a machine, I promise you. When I stayed in Benoni, um, before the lawyer took the house, sorry, when I stayed in Benoni, from my front door to my gate was 95 meters. It's a big plot I had, you know what I'm saying? And Nala used to sleep outside 
uh, she was a bit of big to go inside and she made a bit of hassles outside. And every night, you know, you'd open it, you'd close the trellis door, you'd close the security door, you'd flood the moat, open the swamp thing, you'd put your mother in or there and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And Nala would be like looking at you going like, I want to come in just once. Okay. I'm just a dog. I'll go sleep outside. Are you sure? So what she should do, every time I sit down, she would actually bark at everything that walked past. She's a machine. So two o'clock in the morning, she'd be like running to the gate. Hala, hala, hala. A leaf would drop off. Hala, hala, hala. I thought, I can't do this cock anymore. Babe. So I used a bit of physics, a little bit of physics, a little bit of physics, so I've been watching stuff. And I took a small piece of hose pipe and I put it in Nala's bum. So she, she still barked, but she didn't have any compression. You know what I'm saying? She got like... <laughs> <coughs> and then criminals would come past the gate and go like... <laughs> and we couldn't hear them. I thought, now a bit of physics, a bit of physics. So I got this piece of wire that was <coughs> two meters shorter than the gate, to the gate. And I tied a piece on the gate and I tied a piece on the little piece of hose pipe in Nala's bum. And she would jaw it to these criminals and all that stuff. And she was a stealth dog for 98% of the time. And then it was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I used to get bosses look up from the burglars. <laughs> Jack's laughing at this one. As you can see, Jack's got my mind. He likes to crack jokes. The plane landing <coughs> sequence. Wow. There was a plane. I used to do the story a long, long time ago about when Africa got its first airline and they were pulling in and the first flight they came in they said hello this is uh, Ugandan Airways we are requesting to land and the, the guy at the, the London Tower says hello this is London Heathrow <coughs> Airport could you please give us your height and position yes certainly I'm five foot six and in the front <laughs> so, and the plane comes to land like a <laughs> and the one says hey this is the shortest runway I've ever landed upon. And the cargo pilot says, yes. It's got to be the widest. Did you like that, Sandy? Here we go. <laughs> it's the last joke I'm doing like that. Okay, go. There are a lot of people asking for Ford Courier Double Cab V6. Ford Courier Double Cab V6. My Ford, I had a Ford Courier, brilliant Ford Courier. It was brilliant, brilliant. And I suited up the engine and that. It was great. I used to get um, 75 litres, I lie, I used to get 75 kilometres per litre if, if, if I left it in the garage. Was it called? Okay. I think I want the sounds. You want the sounds? Oh, I'm a V8. I love V8s. I love V8s. There's a noise of a V8. It's just like a, for a bloke. You know what I'm saying? It's a bloke thing. It's like, <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. At my age, it's better than sex, but in fact, at my age, it's better than peeing in a garden. Now, all blokes in South Africa pee in a garden. We know that. We all pee in a garden. You send your wife inside after the chore. You say, darling, go inside, lock the house up. I'll check for criminals. And then you pee on the same bush. You remember that? And then every night you go out and pee on the same bush. The next day, the garden, the, whole, the rest of the garden's like... Except there's one bush in a corner that cracks like... And then your wife would say to you, I don't understand, I put fertilizer on this, I put quick grow, I can't do anything. Why is it? And you just go like, oh. Oh, 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 Go. A uh, hungry lion cruiser. You want to do the hungry lion? I'll do that, and then I'm going to do no con and spray, and then we're going to do it. Okay. People often ask me, you know, about the Kruger Park and things like that, so, especially foreigners. And... Uh, Somebody asked me just out of the blue one day, why do lions eat so much? And I said, seriously? It's because they're stoned. So what do you mean? I said, well, let me explain. <coughs> lions are carnivores, okay? Which means they eat herbivores and omnivores. And mainly herbivores. Now, on the plains of Africa, most of the grass is grass. 
But some of the gross is gross, if you know what I'm saying. And you know, bro, if you eat dacha, four hours later it claps it properly. Because you try dacha cookies, you eat one and you think, there's nothing wrong with this, I'll have another one. Another one, and four hours later, and when you're stoned, no matter what you eat, you can eat some more. You can have a 73 course dinner and skip pudding. And have a joint instead, and you're smoking dacha, and while you're smoking dacha after your stomach's over here somewhere, and you think to yourself, yeah, but I could graze a chicken as we speak now. Well, it's the same thing. Lions eat herbivores who've been eating grass. So the lion is always hungry. Now, a lion has just chowed, just chowed a buffalo, okay? And it's walking home, and it checks by the watering hole, there's a spring walk there, and it's in the grass, it thinks to himself, stomach's out here, thinks to himself, you're brew. I could graze a giraffe as we speak now. About 50 meters away, there's a couple of hyenas listening to this. And it made me realize, do you think hyenas laugh? Because they want to. They also stand very slow. He wants to eat a giraffe. <laughs> so Miss, Mrs. Lion has got the springbok in her sights and she's like, I've got this move. things. What have I come here for, Bru? <laughs> now before I go, thank you very much for tuning in. I'll try some more next week. We'll make a plan. Um, I've been begged for this a million times and I'll do it. Why not? Because it's it's a joke that actually I think I've got close to a million hits on YouTube. But before I go, folks, please um, don't forget, we are all in this together, okay? We are all in this together. Let's help one another. If you know somebody that's by themselves, phone them, FaceTime them, do something, send them memes, send them something funny, and just say, listen, pal, we're all in it together. No matter who you are, we are all in it together. Another thing that's happened, it's funny how things happen out of necessary, necess necessary, whatever, you know what I'm saying. A lot of people have been asking me to write jokes for them because they, they're doing like a little speech or they're doing a best man at a wedding later in the year or they're doing this and doing that. So I've created this little channel called Jokes for Africa. And uh, you just got to write in and tell me what jokes you want. Uh, give me five bullet points and I will write jokes about that particular person or event or whatever and send it back to you for a small, a small fee, a small fee, not a lot of money, a small fee. And uh, I've got to make a crust as well, X. So if you're interested in anything from Jokes for Africa, please contact Deirdre, D-E-I-D-R-E, -E, at barryhilton.com. Quite simple. Now, thanks very much for watching me. I came out of a show one day and I Oak said to me, Barry, Morgen ons brei. Wil jy morgen brei? And I said, bro, I th I'd like to brei, but thank you very much, but I like to eat before 11. And his wife started laughing. And I said, well, what's the problem? She said, no, that's what happens in our house. And I said, well, that's what happens in every South African house. So then I thought about it. So I go to this Oaks house the next day at 10 o'clock in the morning. He's waiting for me, Barry. Dag jy, gaan ons hou. Want nou gaan ons brei. Ons gaan nou brei, Barry. Barry, no gaan ons brei. 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm thinking, yeah, we're gonna eat now. Barry, no gaan ons brei. Klein doppiki, klein dop. So we actually clean up until seven o'clock that night. And then eventually I was hungry. I went into the kitchen to see if the dog had left any food. You know what I'm saying? And he's in Barry, money what any? Money what any? Ons gaan nou brei. No gaan ons brei. Ons gaan nou brei, Barry, Barry. No gaan ons brei, all right. Dag jy. Met ijs, met ijs. So we met Aisht until 10 o'clock that night. And then 10 o'clock, I had visual signs of malnutrition. My, my pupo was eating my liver. And only then, this ook says, Nie wacht, Barry. Is he hunger? Barry, no, vrou, Barry's hungry. Take for me out of a deep freeze. That's my time, my cousins. Thank you. For tuning in to us. Remember, we all South Africans, we are all in this together, no matter who you are, what you are, 
We are South Africans fighting this cause. Stay safe, stay well, wash your hands. I will see you sometime next week. Thank you. Oh, oh yes. Uh, the very, uh, that was Jack. Come here, Jack. Gonna do that quickly. So that's the end of the show for this. And I'm gonna meet uh, just the show. Go, go, go. Thank you. Uh, I've just been reminded on Saturday morning, folks, on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, what the hell, I'm going to do a breakfast braai. I'm going to do a breakfast braai, but I don't think it's going to be on live. Let's braai all together and let's send each other pictures. Can we do that? No, can we not? It's got to be on live or whatever. We'll keep, keep you informed. On Saturday morning, we're going to have a breakfast braai. We like to use this thing called a bon braai. It's a really cool portable braai. Uh, I've got to use charcoal, but it's okay. It's for breakfast. And what we do is we use this big pan and then we make lacquer bacon and eggs and mushrooms and things like that while we're sitting outside. And we'll film it. We'll have a jaw. Why don't you join us? 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, breakfast by. Tell us what you're going to buy. I'll give you a shout out. Thanks very much for being South African. Thanks very much for supporting this cause. We will see you on Saturday.